Hey guys, how's it going? It's right here. Today I want to talk about Sylvanas. Sylvanas is a sustained range DPS dealer, and her job is, in fights is to basically just put out as much damage as possible. And her damage is pretty slow and sustained AoE. It's not burst damage, it's not like a mage, and it's not like Vala who does more damage up front. Her damage is going to be more poke oriented and more sustained. So her main DPS tool is Shadow Dagger, which basically, let's turn on the minions here, throws out a dagger and does da initial damage and then additional damage over two seconds. And it'll also bounce to nearby targets. So this includes uh, heroes, enemies, any kind of enemy, including structures. So this will also bounce, you throw it at the gate there, it'll bounce to the whole wall. The interesting thing to note here though, is when you throw it at a wall, so if I throw it at this turret here, it won't actually bounce to the small wall. So it's most optimal to throw it to the small wall because it'll bounce to the rest of the gate as well. So basically you get extra damage on this little wall here. Uh, her Q is Withering Fire, and it basically does, if you, you can hold it down to do damage, and it has five charges, and it does damage to the nearest enemy, and it prioritizes heroes. So if there's minions near you, uh, so if I turn on minions again, you'll see that it prioritizes uh, the Arthas here over the minions if he is within range. And you can see that the little indicator here will show who is being prioritized. So you don't have to hold this, you, can, you, you don't have to press this repeatedly, you can just hold Q and it will shoot as, as fast as you can. Uh, her E is Haunting Wave, and it sends forth Banshees, which deal damage as they hit, and it, you can reactivate it to teleport to the Banshee's location. So if you teleport, uh, the Banshees actually stop being cast, they, they stop moving. So if you're trying to hit enemies that are in front of the Banshees here, so if I do it really quick, uh, there'll be nothing there. Um, this can also be very useful for many other reasons. So obviously you can use a Haunting Wave to jump over walls. Um, you can also use it, as you can see here, it says unstoppable uh, when you actually use it. I don't know if you can see that, it's very brief. But while you're actually moving through the air here, so right now, you're actually invulnerable um, to all spells and unstoppable. So if Power Blast is coming at you, uh, you can use Haunting Wave to dodge the Power Blast. If Zul roots you, you can use, while you use this, while, while the, the root ticks down and when it eventually ticks down, and if you're in the kind of haunting wave form, you will you can dodge that. So you can you can use that ability to dodge a lot of abilities that you might not otherwise be able to survive. So obviously, you want to use it to get over walls and stuff. So the point of haunting wave here is basically to uh, <clears throat> you want to use it almost purely for utility. So yes, it does damage. It does 250 damage, but that's pretty insignificant. You can see that uh, Savannah's auto attack is 186, so it does a little bit more than an auto attack. Um, and of course it's AoE, but it also costs a significant amount of mana. So if you notice that Withering Fire does not cost any mana at all. So only Shadow Dagger and Haunting Wave cost mana. So if you're using uh, just Shadow Dagger and Withering Fire, you're going to have your mana cost as opposed to uh, using Haunting Wave. Well, maybe not half because Shadow Dagger has a lower cooldown, but you're going to be using significantly less mana. So one, you don't want to be using Haunting Wave all the time because you want to save on mana. And two, you want to make sure that you have it available for when you really need it because Haunting Wave is really your only mobility spell, so you don't want to be using it aggressively. The number one thing that bugs me about people playing Sylvanas, um, and the number one thing I can tell people who are inexperienced about playing Sylvanas is that they will be in a fight, okay, and they'll use the, they'll be attacking stuff and then use it in the middle of a fight, okay. This doesn't, this doesn't really do anything. It's not worth using it for damage. The second I see a Sylvanas, say if I'm the tank and a Mirrodin in a team fight. The second I see the enemy Sylvanas use Haunting Wave to engage into a fight, I'm going to jump on that Sylvanas and kill her. And any kind of smart team or good players will also target at that and you'll get punished for it. So don't use Haunting Wave um, aggressively unless it's 100% securing the kill. Don't use it just for the sake of using it. Make sure you keep it up for mobility. Uh, so Shadow Dagger is going to be your, your, your basic poke ability and it's going to be your main source of damage. So yes, it's on a 10 second cooldown, but you can reduce this through... Uh, talents and it's going to do a significant amount of damage and it's going to do a lot of AoE damage and the range is, is, is also quite long. You, it, you can see that it outranges turrets. Um, if I actually go up to auto attack this turret, you'll see that before I auto attack, the tower will shoot me. Um, so you can use you can use your your W. You can also use your E if there's no enemies around to get up to the wall here before uh, the turret attacks me. Obviously, I failed there. Um, so. You can see that the, the towers are actually not attacking me, and this is because of Solanza's passive. So the thing that she's most known for, which is black arrows. The basic attacks and abilities stun minions, mercenaries, and structures. So 
Notice it doesn't, it doesn't say monsters, so this only does minions, mercenaries, and structures, uh, so it won't affect any kind of uh, objective creature. So it doesn't affect, obviously, the immortal or a punisher or the little minions on uh, Colonel Shrines. It only affects um, the things specified. It also doesn't affect heroes. Uh, so after you, you attack a hero or attack any of these uh, minions, mercenaries, or structures, it, you're going to stun the um, target and it's going to stun from the last point of damage. So what this means is that since Shadow Dagger lasts two seconds because it does damage over two seconds and Black Arrow stuns for one second, the target will be stunned for three seconds. So you can see that if I just go and auto attack, it's a one second stun, but if I throw my W on it, it's actually going to stun it for three seconds. So keep that in mind. Um, Shadow Dagger is very useful for disabling buildings. So when should you pick Sylvanas, and what is she good first? Well, there's a there's a, a sizable difference between high level play with Sylvanas and kind of lower level play. So a lot of lower tier play, let's say, uh, I'll see Sylvanas highly prioritized on maps like Haunted Mines, Battlefield of Eternity, and Infernal Shrines. Those specifically, but of course some other maps as well. And that is because when the objective spawns, you can push really hard with it with Sylvanas. So if, on Battlefield of Eternity, you know, you win the Immortal, and then you push with Sylvanas and you can disable the buildings and it's really hard to kill the Immortal. And instead of getting a fort, you might get, um, or instead of getting a wall, you might get the fort. Or instead of getting a fort, you might get a fort and a keep wall or a keep. And that's obviously really significant. It can really help to snowball the game. Um, now this isn't the same. People do not prioritize these heroes in competitive or high level play. And that is for one simple reason, because there are better heroes to pick in team fights than Sylvanas. So Sylvanas' strength is that you can obviously snowball the game, and her strength is wave clear. And although her wave clear isn't that good from this part of her kit, her talents can significantly improve her wave clear. Um, but in general, Sylvanas has very good wave clear, and she has very good PvE strength, so obviously very good at split pushing and things like that. Um, and th something I also want to add is, of course, you see heroes like Gazlo, who are always or very frequently used for split pushing. And Sylvanas can actually split push just as well as Gazlo um, for the most part. So if you want to split push, at least pick Sylvanas. I don't recommend it ever. I think that you shouldn't do it, um, except for very specific circumstances in the game. But that's just a side note. If you're going to split push, at least use Sylvanas because she's still really good with it and she can still be really effective in a team fight. So when should you pick Sylvanas? Well, I mean, you, you can really pick her in any time you need sustained damage. She fulfills, for the most part, the same role as Gul'dan, um, or like a Lunara. Um, maybe also a Vala, but Vala just has like better damage. And Gul'dan will just output more damage and more effective damage in a team fight than Sylvanas, for the most part. Of course, Sylvanas has the advantage of PvE. Uh, she has the advantage of being able to poke a little bit better and she has a bit more mobility, but you might just want more damage in team fights with Gul'dan sometimes. So for team fight, winning team fights, Sylvanas might not be the best pick, but you have to remember that she has a lot of PVE uh, strength. So you're sacrificing a little bit of team fights for a little bit of PVE or player versus environment strength, which is like for structures, doing camps and things like that really effectively. So obviously when you do camps with Sylvanas, because of her passive, you can um, easily solo ogres. It might take you a little bit of time, but you can solo them. All you want to do is tap Q uh, every one second so you can get the perma permanent CC on the other one, and you can throw your W out to help you with that. Uh, you can also, when you're walking up to towers, you can use the same strategy, so you can target one tower with withering, withering fire. So all you have to do is stand closest to one tower and attack the other one. So you can see that the little icon here is around the tower, and this can help you uh, disable both towers at the same time. You have to get the timing down a little bit. I haven't played Sylvanas in a little bit. So, Sylvanas is a great hero. She's one of my favorite heroes. Not too relevant in the meta right now, but she's perfectly viable if you want to play her. Uh, so let's go over talents really quick. So talents are level one are Overflowing Quiver, Paralysis, and Mercenary Queen. So all three of these talents are viable, and it's really dependent on the map. So let's go over the maps. Um, Mercenary Queen is a map where you don't need Paralysis and you don't need Overflowing Quiver. So pretty much the only map I would take Mercenary Queen on for the most part is I would take it on Haunted Mines, the new Haunted Mines, and I would take it on uh, Towers of Doom. So both of those maps, can, you, taking the camp out is very effective, 
and it can allow you to get a very significant advantage. So you don't actually need wave clear on either of those maps, which is what overflowing quiver provides, and you don't need the pushing for the most part from paralysis on either of those maps either, because Towers of Doom, of course, isn't a pushing map, and the Mercenary Queen bonus is just more powerful than paralysis on Haunted Mines. So this actually affects the um, it increases the damage that mercenary camps do, non-boss mercenary camps. So this means that if you take out this siege camp or this night camp and you stay near the camp, it'll do more damage. But it also increases the damage of the unique camp. So I guess they're not really unique anymore, but the shaman camps, the siege camps, and the uh, the spooky camps on Tower of Doom. Uh, that'll actually, when they run into explode, those camps will actually do 50% more damage. And the same on Haunted Mines. So Mercenary Queen is really good on those maps. Uh, I wouldn't take it on any on any other maps, though. Paralysis is good on um, any kind of more push-oriented map where wave clear isn't as important. So <clears throat> paralysis is good on Cursed Hollow. It's good on uh, Battlefield of Eternity and kind of those kinds of map bigger maps where wave clear isn't as important. So you might even take it on uh, Braxis Holdout as well. And Overflowing Quiver is for pretty much every other map where wave clear is important. So it's good on Dragon Shard and Infernal Shrines. It's good on uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen. And when you want to wave clear, this helps you out. So when you kill a nearby minion, uh, a free Withering Fire is shot. Uh, it doesn't hit heroes. So basically, when you kill four minions, you get four extra charges of Withering Fire, which does a bit, quite, quite a bit more damage, and that's going to help you clear the wave. Um, so standardly, I, I go Overflowing Quiver. I actually take Overflowing Quiver most of the time. Even on maps where Paralysis might be better, I just prefer the wave clear from Overflowing Quiver, especially in Pure League, where... Wave clear is really important. So at level four, we have Withering Barrage with the Wind and Lost Soul. So Lost Soul is, I, I really want to say it's it's Solanus' best talent. And if not her best talent, it's one of her best talents for sure. So it reduces the cooldown of Shadow Dagger by 1.25 seconds each time it spreads to a hero. So obviously if you hit one hero, it's only going to reduce the cooldown by 1.25, but that's still more than 10%. That's still um, you know 12.5%. That's a significant cooldown reduction. If you hit two heroes, you're going to reduce the cooldown by um, 2.5 seconds. And that's a 10 second cooldown. That's significant. And it's very easy to get two heroes. So in team fights, you're going to be hitting heroes since it spreads. And it's really, really easy to spread. You're going to be hitting at least three heroes. Probably you might be hitting five heroes every every uh, W. And that's going to significantly reduce the cooldown of your Shadow Dagger. And that's going to give you significantly more damage. So this is a 100% must pick talent. And I don't understand... I really don't understand why you would get anything else this tier. It's really, really, really good. Um, this is like a huge power spike for Solana, especially for, for team fights uh, starting post four. Uh, Withering Barrage increases the Withering Fire charges by one, and you can fire it 33% faster. So this helps you burst targets. I don't again, I don't really like this ta this talent. I think Lost Soul just gives you more value. And with the Wind, it increases the uh, Withering Fire range by 25%. So you can see here, when I walk up, my auto attack range is here, and I can Q while auto attacking. And I think it's basically the same range. It might actually literally be the same range. Uh, yeah, Withering Fire is the same range as auto attack range. So you don't need a Withering Fire range that's larger than your auto attack range, because you're always auto attacking in fights, as you should be, um, at least as much as you can. Uh, so you don't need to out, ex you don't need to overextend the range of your auto attack. So this is going to get pretty much no value. At level 4, another easy choice, Barb Shot, is going to be your choice. So 200% bonus damage from Withering Fire against uh, minions, mercenaries, and monsters. So since it says monsters, this does increase your damage versus uh, when you're trying to race on Battle of Eternity or um, on Infernal Shrines and maps like that. So you're going to get significantly more damage, three times as much damage from your Q. And this helps significantly with Wave Clear. So the other option... Or, or they might be looking at is Unstable Poison. And this used to be really strong, but it's gotten nerfed several times, and it no longer damages heroes or structures, and the damage is significantly reduced. So you can see, um, I'll take Unstable Poison here, and you can see that the wave clear, what the wave clear is like. I'll just use my E here to help clear it a little faster. So you can see that it, it clears the wave fairly quickly, and then if we reset really quick, Choose a talent. and I take... Uh, barb shot. Well. It's not quite as quick, but it's still pretty good wave clear. So 
though, you still have pretty good wave clear with Barb Shot. It's not quite as quick as I said, um, but you're still going to be able to clear the wave. And you have the, bon the benefit of also being able to uh, do Ogre Camps and do Mercenary Camps and clear them a lot quicker than you would otherwise. You can see that it burns it to half health pretty quickly, of course, in level 20, though. Uh, the other option is Possession, and this used to be a Heroic, and even though it's a level 7 talent, it's still totally trash. So pretty much, not pretty much, literally never take this talent. So you should always be taking Barb Shot. Um, there's also something that I should note here is that Overfl Overflowing Quiver used to work with Barb Shot. So when you kill, or when a minion dies near you, it would sh shoot out a Withering Fire Charge that would proc with Barb Shot. So you get significantly, really, really good wave clear. Um... This, I don't know if it's been nerfed or if it's a bug, but this no longer works with Overflowing Quiver. I'm, it's assuming, I'm assuming it's a bug, and once it's fixed, it'll significantly increase your wave clear, and Unstable Poison and Barbershot won't even be comparable. So basically, Barbershot, Barbershot gives you almost as much wave clear as Unstable Poison, but it also helps you deal with other things on the map. At level 20, we have Wailing Arrow and Mind Control. So Mind Control is actually not as bad as... Uh, as it gets a wrap for. Let's see if I can actually mind control this. Oh, no, I can't. Remember. Okay. Uh, so mind control, you basically channel for 2.5 seconds, and it's 3.5 seconds in total because you have to channel at the beginning, or 1.5 second, or one second cast, and you can basically just control a hero and you move them. So what this does is it basically gives your allies uh, the opportunity to catch an enemy, and Yes, this is basically always trash, but it's not always trash. I think there's some situations where it could be good. Of course, Cleanse will immediately cancel this effect. If you get stunned, this effect will also be canceled. And if you're just mind controlling in the middle of a team fight, there's a good chance that you'll just die. Uh, this is good, though, if maybe you're snowballing a game, or maybe the enemy team doesn't have any cleanse, and your team is really following up. Um, it, you could have situations where mind control could be um, a pick. And maybe not the most viable pick. The other option at level 10, which is Willing Arrow, is probably the better pick, like 99% of the time. But I don't actually think my control is total trash. I actually do think it has some value, even though it sees pretty much zero play. Uh, so the other She's option is Willing Arrow, and it's the standard ability at level 10. And you can you can cast it, and it shoots an arrow that does damage and silences enemies um, once it explodes. You can also make it explode a little bit earlier if you need to. So the shortest you can make it explode is pretty much right in front of you. And it's going to do a significant amount of damage and silence enemies in an area so they can't cast spells for 2.5 seconds. And this is really good for uh, multiple things. It's good for finishing off targets. It's good for just causing chaos in a team fight where people can't cast abilities. And it's really good for denying some heroes of their critical abilities. So if you cast it on um, an Illidan or a Rhaegar, they won't be able to Ancestral or Divine Shield. If you cast it on, on an Illidan, he won't be able to Metamorphosis or Evasion. Um, so heroes that really rely on core kind of abilities, even like a Mirrodin, you silence him before he's going to die, then, so he can't Avatar or Dwarf Toss. Um, it can be very, very useful to uh, deny those abilities, but most of the time you're going to be using it kind of just in the fight to kind of burst down and just prevent the enemy team overall from using abilities and causing chaos. So it's a very strong ability. It does take a little bit of time to, although it's easy to kind of, it's actually quite easy to target, um, it'll take some time and some finesse to know when to use it correctly. At level 13, we actually have viable talents. That every, sing, uh, every, every talent here is viable to some extent. Uh, so Life Train, every time Shadow Dagger jumps to a target, it, it'll heal you. Um, and that's that includes um, any kind of monsters. So on Infernal Shrines, um, every time it jumps to the one of the small minions, it'll heal you on Braxis Holdout. Every time it jumps to the Zerg, it'll heal you. And every time it jumps on Toon Spire Queen, for example, it'll also heal you. So I actually really like this talent. I might I might be the only one. I don't see anyone else taking it, but I actually think it's quite good, especially when you have Lost Soul at level 4. So you're going to have it so if say on Tomb of the Spider Queen, for example, the enemy team is pushing with a sputter wave and you're throwing out your lost souls and you have life drain, it's gonna be spreading to I don't know, ten to fifteen targets, maybe if they're pushing. So you have like five heroes and you have the web queen and you have a a big wave, it's gonna to spread to a significant amount of targets, so that's gonna heal you for a ton of health. Um at, like you can get like at least eight hundred health per W and it's gonna have a cooldown of, you know, like less than four seconds. So this can be a very, very strong 
uh, ability at level 13, especially if you don't have a healer or if you um, if you just only have one healer, you're just not getting enough heals, so you just need more healing overall. I actually think this is a pretty viable talent. Uh, on maps where wave clear isn't as important, so you won't be able to hit as many targets, because you're not going to, even if you, you hit all five heroes in a team fight, this doesn't really heal that much. It'll heal, you know, like maybe 400 or something in a team fight at level 20, and that's not too significant. Um, so I don't think it's worth taking if you're on maps like Cursed Hollow or Tyrant's Doom or something like that. Uh, I would definitely not take that, but on wave clear maps, I think this is a good option, especially Infernal Shrines. Uh, you just throw it in the, the shrine area, and you're going to heal a ton, especially from the enemy heroes within. Uh, so Windrunner is another option. This is the standard option for the most part. Uh, teleporting with Haunting Wave fully recharges with your fire, and Haunting Wave can be cast for a second time. So I'm going to take it here just to show you. So I'll take cooldowns off. So I can, if I throw all of my Qs in here, what it basically allows me to do is you can Q, and then you can Q again, you can E. And you can basically um, get 10 free charges of Withering Fire, and that'll help you to, I guess, burst down a target and give you more damage, as well as the extra charge on a Haunting Wave. And that extra charge can be useful, so this allows you to actually eat into fights. But like I said, I don't like the, I don't like using Haunting Wave into a fight. I use I like using it only as utility and to get out a of a sticky situation. So if I'm using it to go into a fight, that means I have to go out, which means I won't have it when I need it. And this is kind of personal preference, I guess. This is, like I said, those standards. So um, if you're just trying to go for the standard build, then you should probably just take this. Build of Forsaken is a good option if they have a lot of CC. So activate to become stoppable, and you gain boom speed. So if they have um, like a Diablo, if they have a Murden, an ETC, Toronto, Kerrigan, uh, Kel'Thas, things like that. Things where if you get hit by CC, you'll die. Then will this for a second can be good. It can take a little bit of time to get good with it, Choose a um, or just to get good in general. Haha. -ha. But once you do, it can be pretty useful. So you can activate it here. It doesn't really look like much, but you are unstoppable during that time frame. Uh, the other option, of course, is spell shield, and spell shield is good if the main team has a lot of kind of burst damage. Um, and you don't have any healers, you don't have prevention or things like that, where the burst is just killing you in fights, and that can be a good option. At level 16, uh, there's a couple options as well. So we have Evasive Fire, Cold Embrace, Overwhelming Affliction, and Remorseless. So Remorseless is just pretty much bad. It's like follow-through, um, but it's better because obviously Sylvanas can proc her Withering Fire really easily, which gives you a lot of charges. So this just basically say um, increase the damage of your next your, your, your basic attacks do 40% more damage. That's what it should pretty much say because that's pretty much what it does. Uh, the fact that you have to use the ability first doesn't really matter because you're always using abilities on Sylvanas. Uh, so that's nice, but compared to Executioner on Raynor, for example, where his range is a lot longer, it's 30% versus 40%, but his auto attacks are significantly more important than Sylvanas. So on Sylvanas, your auto attacks... While yes, they do a lot of damage, they aren't the most important part of Sylvanas' kit. Of course, her abilities do a lot more damage than Rainer's abilities do. So you want to... So I don't think that Remorseless gets as much value on Sylvanas. The other options here are... So Cold Embrace is standard. Shadow Dagger takes uh, makes the initial enemy vulnerable. And they, so when you throw your W out, that first target that you throw your W on will take 25% more damage for two seconds. And that can help you if you're running any kind of blow-up comp or you're just trying to burst down a target in general. The other two options are Evasive Fire and Overwhelming Affliction. So Evasive Fire increases your moon speed by 30% um, for two seconds. And since the cooldown of Withering Fire is two seconds, even when you've used all five of your charges, you'll still have 30% movement speed. So this basically gives you 30% movement speed. Um, I don't like it, but I wouldn't say this talent is bad. Uh, I'd say that it maybe it's preference. Now I do like Overwhelming Affliction, and this is my standard talent choice at level 60 on Sylph. So I have a little bit different um, build regarding like my 13 and 16 talents. So 16, Overwhelming Affliction, I actually really like this talent. This, in, in a sense, it almost permanently slows the enemy team by 30%. So it says, uh, Black Arrows now also apply to heroes and slow their movement speed by 6% for the duration. Stacks up to five times. So what this means is, let's take this talent. Um, when I auto attack a hero, they're going to be slowed by 6% and that stacks obviously 5 times for 30%. So you might say, well, that's pretty bad. 
um, because you have to like auto attack them a bunch, and then now they're slowed. Uh, but you can actually just throw your W, and since your W procs five times um, over two seconds, you can see that it procs multiple times here. It'll actually apply the full duration of overwhelming affliction. And remember how earlier I talked about how um, Shadow Dagger, even though it, so your, your black arrows last for one second. Um, but with Shadow Dagger, it actually affects the towers for a th total of three seconds. Um, the same thing will happen to heroes. So when you throw out your Shadow Dagger, they'll actually be slowed for a total of three seconds. And if you get Black Arrows, or Paralysis, sorry, at level one, that'll increase the duration of Black Arrows um, from three seconds to 3.75 seconds. Um, because it increases the um, effectiveness of your passive from one second to 1.75 seconds. And so if you have paralysis, this talent becomes even more effective. And this basically permanently slows the enemy team um, or significantly slows them for a large amount of time because of loss of level 4. So you have a lot of synergy between your talents and your Shadow Dagger is going to become becomes a huge part of your kit and can do significant work in team fights. So you basically just throw out your W at every single opportunity you can and you're trying to hit as many things as you can with it. And that's pretty much how you play Sylvanas in team fights. Of course, you want to auto attack in through your Kyoto as well. Let's go to 20. Um, we have some options here, but they're pretty much all all trash. The only options you're going to take are is Bolt of the Storm. Um, pretty much any scenario ever. The only time I'd say you don't go Bolt of the Storm is if for some reason you went Mind Control. Again, I say for some reason because that would be a weird reason. Uh, but let's say you go Mind Control, then you might want to go Dark Lady's Call uh, because it's actually significantly in increases the effectiveness of Mind Control and it actually makes it really, really strong. But uh, of course, Going over Bolt here, Bolt, yes, it's really good. You can Bolt out, and with Haunting Wave, with Bolt, and with, they have Will of the Forsaken or something, you become very, very mobile, especially when you can slow the enemy team at 16. Choose so let's just take random talents here until uh, Dark Lady's Call. Let's turn on minions, and you actually can significantly increase the movement speed of the target that you're mind controlling. So I just want to show that real quick. Um, what this does is it lets you catch enemy heroes a little bit easier that you can run heroes very, very quickly. They'll cover twice the distance that they would otherwise. Uh, okay, so I think that's all I want to talk about today. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, enjoy.